In the last hundred years, we've gone from a Model T car to Tesla, yet our schools have stayed frozen in time. And because schools haven't adapted, our students are getting left behind, unmotivated, unchallenged, and not ready for college or the 21st century occupations they're looking for. 75% nationally of high school students graduating are deemed unprepared for college and careers, according to the ACT test. In Washoe County this past spring, 87% of the juniors who took the ACT were deemed not prepared to succeed at college and careers. Clearly, we have our work set out for us. The time has come to innovate, transform, and reimagine the entire concept of a public school. Luckily, there's a national program encouraging us and supporting us in doing this. It's called the XQ Super School Project. Fortunately, we have this national challenge to design a 21st century school for the Washoe County community that will allow us to envision a pathway through these many daunting challenges. And on the left, you see the tsunami of challenges. We've got declining proficiency rates because of the common core standards being raised. We have the increasing remediation rates going to colleges. We have a 13% college ready per ACT. And again, that's juniors. We uh, don't have the data just for um, seniors, but clearly not enough are ready. We in Nevada have one of the lowest student opportunity indexes. Um, our voucher program recently implemented by the legislature could draw millions away from the public school budget if parents pull their students to go to private schools and homeschooling. Um, the building capacity crisis, which was discussed on October 5th, uh, indicates that we are going to need to get extremely creative with how we're going to accommodate the growth of enrollment. And the good news is that um, with the transformation that is required, Nevada does have a vision for how to do this, and it's called Nevada Ready 21. Also, uh, something I will discuss in a moment as a way that uh, Washoe County can embrace this change and help every student succeed in the 21st century. So regarding the capacity crisis I mentioned, um, on October 5th, the Washoe County School Board heard from a consultant that approximately $835 million would be needed over the next five to 10 years to handle uh, the growing student population expected in our region. This would include six new schools three conversions and one addition onto a high school. However, there's actually no capital building budget in, in, in existence at the moment and fundraising options don't even exist until next fall if a bond uh, vote is put up for, for the community input. So we are desperately behind in the building cycle to accommodate the expected growth, which uh, is probably far more than the 1.7% that was estimated in these calculations. As I mentioned, we do have an opportunity in Nevada and Washoe County to embrace all of these challenges and transcend them, transform through the Nevada Ready 21 program. This is a, a vision to provide a mobile technology to every student in a way that allows them to customize and optimize their learning speed and quality and enable them to become far more college and career ready than we currently can uh, enable them. The only problem is we're unlikely in Washoe County to get any of the funds that were actually approved for this program for reasons I, I won't go into in detail uh, but the other large challenge is that many districts are going ahead with the one-to-one, -one, like Carson City High School just implemented the one-to-one -one for every student. They did not use the, the budget from the Nevada Ready 21, um, nor their district funds. They got it through grants from the state and federal. So even though Washoe County does have a plan to go one-to-one -one and it's completely unfunded, we could get creative 
through this uh, process of designing a super school, including how those resources are uh, attracted to support competitive learning through 21 21st century learning. I am quite optimistic that if we participate in this XQ Super School challenge, that we can meet the needs on multiple dimensions in Washoe County. For example, the design can inform the build out of the three new high schools needed in, in the next five years. The design can also inform the transformation of existing high schools. Number two, by doing this in a bottom-up community engaged way, we can in design a sort of a collaborative environment, we, an ecosystem, let's say, for the Washoe County community that comes up with really innovative solutions. And by doing that, the third point is that wide participation leads to very strong buy-in, support, and ultimately successful implementations. In other words, participating in this project together as a deeply engaged education community will allow us to enable every student to thrive in this 21st century challenge that we are facing. I think it's a critical design point for our um, super school that we do it in a very fully collaborative way. Um, the reason is because from my experience in transformative learning and change and strategic planning and, and implementation of technology in business, I am very aware of that exciting synergy that happens when people get together around with different uh, backgrounds and different ideas and passions to solve very compelling challenges. And this is a, the unique, most uh, challenging environment I can think of, much more than a standalone business or even a conglomerate worldwide business. A, a public school district has so many stakeholders. And if we can work together, teachers, principals, uh, district staff, trustees, the, the foundations and nonprofits, the business community, the parents, and especially the students driving this design and change, I am I'm very confident that we can come up with something that will allow us to change very quickly for the least amount of uh, investment and most successful outcomes for every student. And by the way, this model of creative synergy and collaboration in solving problems is precisely at the root of what the best uh, learning environments are today. And to do this effectively, we're going to need to use some of the latest communication technologies, including online dialogues, shared documents, and informational videos, not unlike the one I'm speaking to right now. And again, these kinds of communication tools are exactly what our students need to be experiencing in their optimal school environment. To help us collaborate and create a world-class high school, there are lots of resources available. For example, the XQ Project website has some case studies and road shows. Uh, they're traveling the country right now. Um, there are student videos on there and links to lots of sources. Plus, on our, uh, pro our special Washoe County collaborative website, we will have access to our local resources like the UNR and the Education Alliance and um, some of the, 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 the best links to videos and books and TED Talks that will give us great uh, insight into what we could create here to meet every student's needs. So the schedule for applying to the XQ School, super school competition is to submit the basic school concept by November 15th. So in a month, we want to sort of get the community understanding of what the goals of the school are and the, the driving sort of vision for this new concept. The discovery and design phases would happen over the next three and a half months. And by February 
first, we would submit a completed design. So we don't have much time and we're gonna to have to get very creative in how we collaborate, but I'm confident we as a community can do this. And moreover, we need to do this. As we look for potential core concept themes for a proposed new school, I would like to suggest deep engagement as the driving factor. Um, in my experience with my doctoral studies in transformative learning and change, and also all the books that have come out, all the research that has come out lately about how kids are learning is being transformed in this digital age that we are in, uh, we know that more powerful, accelerated, deeper learning happens when we're deeply engaged. And what are the factors that, that lead to engagement? Clear purpose and passion, the autonomy to pursue that passion in a self-directed and individualized way, um, having challenges that are at the cusp of one's aptitude and interest in a flow zone, as they call it, and having real world applications of what's being learned, collaborating, and any opportunity to unleash creativity, curiosity, and critical thinking, which are actually inherent qualities within all of us humans. We just need the encouragement to explore them and, and play with them and develop them. So what this deep engagement translates to in terms of a student's experience is looking at the pathway of development and looking at it from the point of view that it's directed towards a college vocational training job uh, visions that the child has for themselves that they are assisted in developing continuously through their teachers, counselors, parents, and community members. So it's a, it's a much more enabling environment where students thrive because they are being, their needs and desires are being met at every stage of their development. And what's really most exciting to me is that we, because of the technologies that we now have for learning and communications, we are able to have this extended ecosystem for learning that's through the community's support makes possible the necessary changes that will transform how kids are learning. So on the left side, you see uh, that at school, we're doing more college and career counseling and visits from, from colleges and uh, career specialists, career interest groups where the kids are clustered around their interests and bring in speakers to, to, to inspire them. We've got uh, action learning going on in the classroom, peer-to-peer -peer tutoring and mentoring within the and across the ages. Uh, we have the teacher playing the role of the tutor and coach for the one-to-one -one learning environment. We have visual and performance arts and PE and sports still. And the college culture has, has invigorated to become uh, more investigative, collaborative, creative, and performance-oriented. And then beyond the school's walls and uh, playing fields, you have the opportunity to attend college fairs, get career mentoring uh, in different levels of degrees from fairs to workplace tours, job shadowing, internships, apprenticeships, project sponsors, tutors. And that's all enriched because we have a blended learning environment now where kids can be t at home uh, watching teacher created videos and also tie into the world of growing uh, applications and, and modules for learning in every subject area at every level of depth and complexity. Um, and they're all becoming adaptive, which is fascinating to allow individualized learning. Um, the, also teachers and, and students can talk with each other uh, even outside the classroom through these websites. Uh, students can get all their learning needs, needs met through these multimodal ways of delivering content. Uh, and most interesting, you know, parents can become more involved they, in the learning process because the kids are doing much of their work at home and the visibility to 
how they're doing is more readily uh, available than Infinite Campus. Um, study groups still happen outside of school through libraries, boys and girls clubs, and friends' homes, and at, at, at their own homes. And of course, community service becomes uh, an important thing that happens outside the classroom. So the first step is to generate ideas around core themes of our future school. What is the vision? What is the driving inspiration behind our work? What might the new learning ecosystem look and feel like for all participants, not just students and teachers, but parents, community members, principals, every uh, person in the district. We sort of want to get a feel for what is the overarching motivation for learning in the new paradigm? And what are the primary desired outcomes? What, how will we know that it's been successful for students? And how will we know it's been good for the organization? To kick off the brainstorming about what these core concepts and vision might be, I, I put together this extremely rough <laughs> picture. I am no artist, but depicting some of the core concepts, the student holding their laptop in one hand with a picture of the globe and the world to which they now have access. Then they're also holding the wand of creation, of magical generating of real outcomes from the inquiries that they're doing in the real world. Uh, the, they're becoming masters of their own learning. You can see the star above their head. They, they have a goal, they have a passion in their heart, and they're pursuing it with joy on their face. And the tree image is to suggest that as learning happens, it is an organic uh, from the seed of potential within each student uh, to th thrive and flourish into the world and bring beauty and uh, growth to their community. And so on the right side, I sort of uh, use those terms where every student thrives into their unique potential, an environment lush with opportunities to learn and grow. So it's an example of a vision and very open to input from everyone and, and please help me create a better piece of art. Here's another example of a visual description of a core concept with a title, a potential title, Superstream Academy of Washoe County S School District. As you can see, there's some STEM in here, science, technology, engineering, and math, but we, we need to build upon that with arts, we need to have reading, writing, and emotional, social, cultural awareness, both today and historically. We need to have physical health over there on the right to en empower the growth and flourishing of the mind and body. And the technology underlying it all is an enabler of achieving maximum potential learning and growth. And then underneath it is the united community engagement, which we talked about earlier as vital to empowering student learning for the real world. And the star on the right side indicates, yes, every student is succeeding, and it's a student-centered way of succeeding, unlike in the past. I'll be the first to admit that this kind of project can seem daunting, and I desperately want to encourage everyone to participate and help out to make sure we're getting just the right name for this new Washoe County High School and that the mission encapsulates exactly what we need to do and what we uniquely can do here in Washoe County. So one more summary vision that I will throw out there that you can toy with and, and, and uh, add to or uh, build upon, a student-centered learning ecosystem that is inquiry-based customized, technology-enabled, and community-engaged so that every student can thrive to their fullest, unique potential contribution to society. So let me know what you think of it. So in conclusion, I invite you, I encourage you, I ask you please to join the XQ and Washoe design team and unleash your creativity for the benefit of every student in our community. First way is to check out the National XQ Super School project website, 
under that first link slash challenge. And the second item there is the team directory where, where you can register and see who else is in our community that's interested in collaborating around a innovative design. And thirdly, um, come join the Washoe Super School uh, website there, superschoolwashoe.org, where we are beginning to collaborate and do surveys and put together the design that will be ultimately submitted uh, by February 1st. And finally, reach out to me with comments and questions um, at visioning at superschoolwashoe.org. I look forward to meeting you online and having a great fun time doing what's, what we need to do for the every student of Washoe County.